Well, speaking of delicious, we're making paninis. And Christine yes. Broderson from Hortonville is here. She's one of our viewers. She's a great at-home cook. We love uh, when she comes on the show. And if you have any good recipes, you want to come cook with me, please just email me. Great to see you. Nice to see you, Amy. So you're into paninis, too. I know my family loves them. I love the panini, and I... Um, I bought a panini press a couple years ago, and I find that I use it all the time, and you could do so many things with it. And really, I mean, this is just a sampling of, of some sandwiches you can make on it. But truthfully, use your imagination. You really can do anything that you like. They're so wonderful. I think it's nice when you're choosing a panini press to make sure that you can vary the height, because if you squish them too much, then the insides squish out, and, then, and then it's just a mess, and it's not as delicious as it should be, because all the ingredients have, have fled the sandwich. <laughs> so if you're choosing a panini grill after you see today, and you say, I think I would really like one, make sure you get one that has adjustable That's height. That's a really good tip. We're going to put together a wonderful um, panini sandwich platter so we're, it's like for a panini party or yes. a game day or movie night or something like that first of all we started out with some really nice bread really nice bread and that's the ciabatta bread mm -hmm. and you want to slice them about half inch slices and then what you're going to do to make those nice panini grill marks on your bread is you're either going to brush it with butter or olive oil um, I think the butter makes it more brown and attractive but you know if you're watching your calories and you want to do it healthier you can do it with olive oil as okay. well this is the first one we're going to make is in um uh well tell us about this first okay one. this one is going to be artichoke roasted red peppers that you can get in a jar mm -hmm. so that that's a real simple step and um turkey and salami mm. really and it's good. got a really nice dip um yes. that spread i should say because i yes. think that's the other thing important thing when it comes to a sandwich is a great spread it is so this is like um you could use it as a dip very easily, but it's like a, a mayonnaise. Mm. So it's unmarinated artichoke hearts, one can. Okay, that we've drained. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. To and that, um, after you cut them fine, okay. so I guess if you had a dip, other way in. Okay. If you had a dip, uh -huh. you would probably not chop them as coarsely, but we're going to chop them small because okay. it's going to be in the sandwich. Okay, so we just so that'll these, be beautiful. You can certainly do it by hand, too, yep, if you don't certainly. have a food processor. Yep. So that's that. And we'll dump that right into here. Okay. You into this it? bowl. Uh -huh. Okay. And then to that mixture. Uh -huh. Mayonnaise, it looks I like. have the Parmesan cheese, and this is not the grated one you can see. This is the one that is like um, a coarse sandy okay. Parmesan. Okay. Okay. You can throw so that in there. Uh -huh. Half a cup of that. Okay. And mm -hmm. half a cup of the mayo. Okay. Just mix that together. Mm -hmm. Now, do you get this into a little casserole dish and you bake it? Yep. I just okay. put it in a little casserole dish mm -hmm. and I baked it. You've got some right and in the oven. And 350, 20 minutes. Okay. So Super it's simple. You can do this easily one day ahead okay so that you're not doing this on your party day but it just makes a difference it makes it taste so much nicer it, it really it's nicer to bake it first because it just sort of blends the kind of um <clears throat> melts that cheese and it blends the flavors mm -hmm. together mm -hmm. and the artichokes not that they're hard but it just makes them just a wee bit softer for mm -hmm. your sandwich so we butter so the bread butter the bread okay and that's going to go on the outside okay and then you could put the artichoke spread over the top do you go pretty generous on that yes <laughs> i was going to say i hope yes. so because yummy but this is going to be enough for at least a few sandwiches because it's mm -hmm. rich, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So both sides, does it, did the spread go on or just one? Just one. Okay. okay. That's one of the things you want to be careful about with the paninis is that you don't want it to be so over um, filled that you've got um, things oozing out the side. True. So you want to be careful. And I'm cutting these, as you can see, if you want to just take those and put those you on bet. the sandwich. You bet. Because Anytime you have a sandwich and you know you bite into it, you hate for like one long yeah. strip to yes. come out and yes. smack you on the chin. Yes, yes. So that that is not good. Okay, so roasted red peppers roasted on top of peppers. the artichoke dip, and so, then some nice turkey. Mm. I know Festival carries a sun-dried tomato turkey. That ooh, that oh, would be, that would good be on beautiful mm. on there. Mm. And then the same thing I did with the peppers. I'm going to do with the salami. I'm just going to cut it just a little bit. You don't have to do this. I just kind of learned that people get mad when the whole piece of salami sure. falls out sure. when they bite it. Sure. So I just Great cut it. Great little tips. All right, so there's sandwich number one. We're going to get it on the panini grill. Yep. Now let's go ahead and make the, the other ones real simple. Super simple. Oops. And what I love about the other one. How do you do this? Uh, do you like to just, do it this way or the yep. other way? Either way. Okay. Yep. 
Okay, and then we're going to press it down. I'm going to put it on the highest setting because, again, that's where you might have a problem is that you well, just want it to touch a little bit. You okay. don't want it to smash down and get rid of all the ingredients. About four minutes on Okay, it. I'm going to cut some apples. The next one is the mm -hmm. cheddar apple uh, panini. How do yes. you want these? Just thin slices? With the yeah. apples? Okay, mm -hmm. all right. And then, I'm just gonna wipe my you bet, here. you bet. Got a little roasted red pepper on there, That's and that all right. will work with the apple. That's all right. It's and totally do you need different. to peel these or no? Um, yeah, what we're gonna do is cut that into chips. Okay. So, like real thin? Uh, real thin, other way. Other way, okay. So lengthwise. Yep. Lengthwise, you bet. So they're almost like potato chips. Mm. And people don't think about putting like fruit on uh, grilled cheeses, and oh, they're so good. They're so, you know what's a great one too is um, pear mm. and ham. And um, brie, yeah, it could be brie or blue mm. cheese. Mm. Love that. Mm. Same thing. Cut the pear into like chips, almost like okay, so that you can you know put it between the bread. I get exactly. it exactly. Okay, so our apple sliced up. Now we've got some nice cheddar. Mm -hmm. Just uh, like this way is fine. Mm -hmm. Okay. What kind of cheddar are you using? It looks like a white cheddar. That's an aged cheddar. Mm. Mm. And then I think it benefits from a little zing. So I used, used a little coarse mustard on this mm. one. Now this sandwich, if you are gluten-free, um, the Boar's Head brand is friendly to gluten-free people. Oh, okay. And um, you could put this, for some reason, this sandwich in particular really works well um, on that gluten-free bread that bakeries make that could be kind of cakey. Sure. And I don't know if it's just the the cakiness and then the apple, but it it works really mm, well in that instance. Good to know. Good to know. So if you're gluten free, hankering for a sandwich, <laughs> and I'm sure that happens. So there you go. And so don't overdo it on the apples. I see. Yeah. And turkey on this one too. Turkey on this one too. Mm. Or if you or vegetarian, yeah, you want to yeah. skip it.